Hello my friends, welcome to our birth story for our beautiful baby number two. Um, we wanted to share what the process was like and make the big gender reveal. So husband's back, he's joining me and... What's up dads? <laughs> Dad jokes, here we go. Yeah. So where we last left off was the video of me very pregnant at 42 weeks and unfortunately we were doing all the things um, we were walking I was going to acupuncture every day for about like 10 days straight trying to naturally get labor started and we actually thought we were going into labor one night it was the night multiple before. but it was yeah, the, night the, the night before we had to get induced, so I was so excited. I was like, yes, it's happening. I was having contractions a couple minutes apart um, for hours, probably three-ish hours, and then they just died. They died off, and um, unfortunately, we had to go in to be induced because this little one was almost, well, she was 41 in five days. I was not 42 in five days. They would not let me do that. Um, we were rounding 42 weeks and the doctors were ready to get her out. So we went to the hospital. Hi. We just pulled into the parking garage. It's about to go down. Mom's feeling a little nervous. Mike's trying to remain calm for me. Always. <sighs> feeling the nerves but surrendering to deep trust. Excited to meet this little one. And I tried to just be as open-minded as possible about the whole thing. Um, Pitocin was something I really wanted to avoid. I've heard and know through research um, the effects it can have on your own natural oxytocin levels. Pitocin is a synthetic version of oxytocin, so um, I was a little upset that that was the route we were heading down, but at the end of the day, and like I always try and share with you guys, it's what do you want to align with and how do you want to um, remember your experience at the end of it, right? And so it was something I needed to do, um, but I tried to keep my mind open for a beautiful birthing experience regardless. And it was. Yeah, it really was. Um, I will share with you guys that I was actually very surprised by the my own oxytocin levels, natural oxytocin's ability to have that instant bond with this baby. And I didn't get that experience with Kai right off the bat because it was a traumatic birth. So what happened? What happened? Um, okay, so if, if you're gonna stick around, <laughs> um, we'll just run you through the whole thing. Uh, so we had an appointment for 10 p.m. on Thursday night. They typically want to schedule these things at night so that they can give your body a chance to actually go into labor and then, you know, they, they try and get most of the work done uh, the following day. Um, and this was obviously a new experience for us, so bear that in mind. Um, so we get to the hospital, and this was on a day that, like Nicole mentioned, she had been having some pretty regular contractions. Um, and although they had died down, she was still having contractions when we got to the hospital. And so they decided to let us wait a little bit before they started the Pitocin. I think they gave us about four hours. And she was still having contractions. They just weren't really ramping up. Eight, two. We've got the willow rocking. The other day, Nicole had tried pumping and that sent her into the closest thing resembling labor contractions yet. Well, we, we didn't make a connection. Mike made a connection. He's like, wait, he's like, the morning you woke up and had contractions two to four minutes apart, it's like, didn't you pump that same day? It was the only time that I night. pumped. Yeah. 
Mm, yeah. It was at night. Well, so. it was the first thing in the morning, right? No. Or no, it was at night? It was at night. Anyways, my so said, didn't a few you hours pump? after pumping. And I was like, I did pump. Yeah. And I know that obviously nipple stimulation increases oxytocin, which can help with contractions. So this guy was just on it. And I actually thought about it. I thought about it when I was, <laughs> when I was trying to sleep, but I was like, mm, I'm too tired. But then Mike said it and I was like, okay, it's a sign from the universe. So I put these things in as if I'm not comfortable enough, uncomfortable enough. <laughs> and they're up full blown. And now we have some Lo and behold. movement on the monitor. It had kind of kicked up pretty immediately, which is weird. Like there was like a immediate correlation, but now it feels like it's kind of simmered down a little bit who knows yeah you're gorgeous i love you i love you too but when they started her on the pitocin uh we were completely taken aback because her contractions came to a screeching halt um and even the doctors seemed a little confused which was kind of alarming because we, well, I wasn't sharing any of this with her. I was trying to be a supportive partner, but you know, I started uh, wondering if this was all gonna go sideways and if we were gonna end up needing an emergency procedure. And you know, <laughs> I, I'll admit it, I pulled out my phone and was Googling things like what happens when Pitocin doesn't work. And you were. it was a bad rabbit hole to go down. I don't oh recommend gosh. it. Yeah. Um, right. Fortunately, I, I was able to, you know, surrender and put it all away. Um, but it, it was a process getting things going. I mean, I, I want to say they started her on Pitocin sometime between two and three in the morning. And uh, like I, I mentioned, it didn't do anything for the first several uh, rounds of, um, you know, dosage increase, yeah. I guess, because they, they start you out slow. Update. Update. <laughs> She's still pregnant. It's 3.40. Is it? Yeah. Yep. The day kind of went by fast, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. I am three centimeters dilated. Well, I mean, that was like two yeah. hours ago. I may be more now. I don't know. We haven't been checked again as of late, but um, we are full throttle with Pitocin, and that seems to be getting us regular contractions, but we want more intense regular contractions. So that's the goal. So my butt is up again. We're gonna crank some music. We're gonna do some dancing and hope that this baby is just ready to flop on out. And by flop, I do mean flop, flop and drop on out. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Catch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's basically it for now. We are, um, I, oh, I got to take a glorious quick shower. It so did. nice. Rajuj, he uh, rubbed me down with some lavender lotion. It did. That's very nice. So we're just making the best of this little date day, shall we call it? Sure. <laughs> the strangest Got date. ocean views. Yeah, we do have ocean views. And uh, I have jello and <laughs> some interesting tasting chicken broth. Megan's bringing real broth. Megan is bringing real broth. Thank you, Megan. Yeah. And what else? Ooh, uh, the Italian ice, right? Yep. Ooh, that's a treat for mama. Because the jello, meh. Not so good. And Mike is eating meatballs, but he turns his back towards me when he puts a whole meatball in his mouth. I'm like, I can't smell it or see it or anything. So bless I him. I don't know what she's talking uh -huh. about. Right. I've been fasting. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mike getting down on his well-deserved brisket with his back turned to me as if I can't smell the food. Mm-hmm. I haven't eaten in 24 hours, and he got wood ranch brisket, and he's over here like a little mouse <laughs> getting down on the last bits of this brisket. Um, apparently some women don't need much at all to kind of jumpstart their own 
uh, natural um, birthing process. Not me. Yeah. We so, had to take it to basically the max level. Yeah. So o over the course of, <laughs> you know, 20 plus hours, um, they're yeah. inching it up uh, every, you know, two, two hours 20, initially. And then, yeah. then they got to the one, point that they were doing it almost every half, half hour. hour. They were notching it up a little bit. And um, like Nicole mentioned, at, at maybe the, you know, 15 hour mark, um, and she, she was doing really well. Um, we'd heard that the Pitocin contractions can be just completely Delicious. brutal. Yeah. Um, and around that time, you know, the contractions did finally kick in and they were coming in consistently. Uh, and she was, um, doing pretty well through all that, you know, didn't need any other meds, was up and moving and stretching. And uh, just trying to get ready for, you know, what was to come. Um, we have the little one down here. Yeah, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> um, so, like I was saying, at, at about the 15 hour mark, they had gotten her um, up to 17, 17 out of units, whatever that means. Yeah, they, they told us 20 was the, the legal, legal limit. Legal limit they can give you. <laughs> so, um, like... so she's sitting at 17 units per whatever. And that's when it got real. And yeah, then it was, it was, it was my contractions. Yeah, so. I don't know. I, I went into a different world at that point. I really had to focus. I really had to focus on my breathing. And Mike just, and I told him after the fact, I was like, you were so intuitive about the whole process and what I needed. Like Mike would say, go somewhere else, like go somewhere else. And it's exactly what I needed to do. So I was literally, as the pain was rising up, I was like picturing me exhaling and moving the baby like further down my birthing canal. And it was manageable for, I don't know how long I was gone before that new nurse came in and, and cranked it up again, but it felt like at least a, a hour and a half or so. Longer than that. Okay, it cool. Was it was longer than a, that. A few plus. Okay, so good. I was doing that was for a few hours. In a good fight. Yeah, um, you know, really trying. And then when they inched it up to that final level of, of 17, and the contractions caught really, really bad, uh, the nurse lovingly said, I know you want to do this naturally, but I'm just going to let you know. Um, if you do decide you want an epidural, it's gonna take the doctor about an hour to get here because it's nighttime. And I thought, okay, will you please check me again? Let's see how far I have dilated. So they checked me and I think I was at a four and a half yeah. and I had been at a three and a half for- And this was at about the 20 hour mark yeah. of being on Pitocin. Right. Yeah. So I was like, Seriously. Now, my theory is that <laughs> some women are just able to relax easier than others. Apparently my body, when contractions happen, my body just tenses all the way up. No matter how much I'm breathing, how, no matter how much I think I'm relaxed, I think I just have higher tone, which means my muscles are more readily able to contract, which makes dilating really difficult. So I was like, mm-mm. So we had a similar experience with Kai. Yeah. Nicole was stuck at about Three four, and a half, yeah, four, four centimeters for, for 11 hours. a long, long, long time. And um, as soon as I got the epidural with Kai, I dilated to a nine and a half within 45 minutes. And we were pushing within the next 15 minutes. And so I decided to get the epidural this time because I know my body. And I wasn't happy about it, but again, it was like, this is just what my body needs to relax. And the last time I made that call, it was a brilliant call because I was this close to an emergency C-section. I needed that strength to push Kai out. So after 22 plus hours of laboring um, and only being at a four and a half, I was like, this is what my body needs and I'm gonna make that call. So we got, we got the epidural, which by the way, don't jump when the anesthesiologist is trying. <laughs> He's like, don't move. I'm like, ah, 
Um, anyways, we, we got the epidural and it was a good thing I did because uh, the contractions just got worse. Like even though I was numb, I could feel them up in my diaphragm and it hurts. It still very much hurts. So I was able to rest for a couple of hours. And again, just like that, I want to say within an hour and a half, maybe. I mean, we don't even know really because the next time they checked you, yeah. she was fully dilated, fully yeah. uh, a Well, or... no, what's messed up is that they checked me about 30 minutes after I got the epidural and I had gone from a four and a half to like a six within 30 minutes. So I was like, oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was fully dilated the next time they checked me and it was, it was soon ready after. Push, yeah. yeah, ready to push. And um, I was feeling really confident about that because even with Kai, I was able to get him out within 10 minutes or so. Granted, he was vacuum assist because he was really struggling. His heart rate was, whew, it was plummeting. So we had to get him out really, really fast. But with this little one, um, big chilling. Yeah. Yeah. Over I, I, obviously they're monitoring baby's heart rate the entire time. And I just felt incredibly grateful because with this little one, um, the heart rate was consistent and steady all throughout labor, even when the contractions were rolling in hard and long and back to back, like and throughout the birth canal. Yeah. That's when Kai had really trouble. struggled. Yeah. It was yeah. going through. And so this one just was able to maintain and it allowed me to focus much more on just doing what I needed to do. So we got this baby out in three rounds of pushes, which is super exciting. Three contractions. Yeah, three with contractions. Three pushes mm -hmm. each. So about nine pushes. And um, obviously, if, I mean, if you guys are new, you probably don't know that we wanted this gender to be a secret, a surprise. So we were eagerly anticipating this one's arrival and the nurses had put on the board, dad to announce gender. And so, you know, Mike's like, the head's out, head's out, lots of hair, curls, curls. <laughs> and, uh, shortly after you know the rest of the body comes out and the doctor's holding the baby up and the umbilical cord is draped right between the legs and Mike couldn't see what the he's he's looking around eventually he just lifts the leg and I'm all like waiting like come on and to both of our like to both of our surprise because Sorry. even though okay we'll just show you ready <gasps> It's yeah, a girl. So this is our beautiful baby Naya. Hi, baby. We were surprised because even though we both thought it was a girl, we're like, it's probably gonna be a boy because we both think it's a girl. And so, <laughs> oh, saying hello to the world. Yeah. So Mike was like, it's a girl, and we just, uh, we locked eyes. Naya and I locked eyes in that moment, and it was just this instantaneous bond and it was so beautiful and I was so worried about that because of the Pitocin and so it just goes to show like you let go you surrender and you trust the process because in the end it all works out for you even when you think it isn't working out for you even when you're disappointed because it's not what you thought it was going to be you ride the waves you learn to breathe and surrender and something beautiful is usually always awaiting on the other side. So we have our baby girl. We're so excited and she's just been the perfect addition. Like, oh, I'm so excited for the, the balance of energy. We had a lot of testosterone flowing in our household. So it's nice to add some feminine energy to the mix. Yeah. And um, she's a sweetheart. She's such a doll and Kai's in love. Um, he's adjusting really well to being a big brother and yeah, we had a lot of fun. We tried to make, um, some really great memories before this major transition, like before we left to go to the hospital, the night of our scheduled induction, we did a dance party at the house with Kai. Where you at Kai? Come here bud. We got glow sticks out, we played some rave music, and we just danced around, took pictures, 
and uh, made it really special. And then upon her arrival back home, um, we had a present waiting for him from her. And um, we'll have to tell you guys how we came up with the name Naya a different time, but essentially Kai manifested this baby girl and her name is a part of that. So um, it's just, it was all full circle, special, very like surreal moment to have this all come together and and really be the, I don't know, the manifestation of what we've been saying, what if for the past 10 months. So um, just so much joy. And for those of you guys who have sent messages and left comments, Thank you so much. We really appreciate all the love and all the support and we're just soaking all of this up and learning to adjust <laughs> to our new way of life and create a routine as a family of four. The sleep deprivation is starting to creep in a little bit, but we're so grateful because we have a lot more help this time around. And so that's been huge. Find your village. Um, and don't be afraid to ask people to help out because it really makes such a big difference in terms of mental health and everything else. So, yeah. Yeah. We all want to be our best selves for well, you. Mom. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so that is our birth story in a nutshell. 26 hours condensed into a 15 minute video yeah. telling you. <laughs> I mean, if you guys have any follow up questions, yeah, let us know. I'm happy to support you any way we can and uh, know that you're not alone in any of this, right? Like I, I know I had a lot of fear going into this. This is a completely different situation, obviously, than with Kai being induced. Um, didn't know what to really expect or how that would go. Um, so yeah, if you have any and questions or comments. It went better than... Yeah, it I went so for, much better so. than I could have hoped for. Um, so yeah. I'm happy to clarify anything that might pop up for you. But if you stuck around for the entire video, we love you. You are our ride or dies. Um, yeah, thanks for being a part of the village. We appreciate you and we will catch you in the next video. Bye. <laughs> oh, that's a baby Naya. There she is. Baby Naya says bye. Bye everyone.